I don't like Biden. What good's he done for us? I think Afghanistan pretty much sums it up. What a dumb adult. My stomach does somersaults when I think about those 13 soldiers that were killed the fucking gall. Then he goes to the service and keeps checking his watch like he has somewhere better to be. I swear the disrespect doesn't stop. Pick your fucking head up. Look at the women and men you killed. I don't understand how anyone could even defend you still. And if they do, they either don't know what they're talking about or they're lying to themselves because they know damn well you're a problem now. Hey, what's up, everybody? Jazz Brogonzo here. Another What's Next weekend edition. Hope you're enjoying this weekend, wherever you are. People have seemed to have forgotten Afghanistan. Outside of those, of course, like Marjorie Taylor Greene and Lauren Boebert and uh, Madison Cawthorn and other patriot-loving Americans. But in the world at large, Afghanistan has gotten forgotten. Yeah. Afghanistan. For the better of our 20 years since 9-11, we have spent billions of dollars, thousands of lives lost. Of course, blood, sweat, tears, and treasure. And of course, the main objective was to go after one Osama bin Laden because, of course, he was the mastermind behind the death of over 3,000 U.S. Americans in a clear act of war. But when we abruptly pulled our military out of Afghanistan, it caused a chain reaction to the point that 13 Marines were senselessly killed all due because of one Joe Biden. And yes, it is all your fault. Dementia riddled old man who has no idea of what he does got 13 service members killed. But a news story has broken out exposing what the true issue was and the chaos that ensued. Let's take a look. This comes out of Breitbart. Biden's order to get, quote, effing asses in seats contributed to August 26 Afghanistan attack that led to 13 Marines getting killed. Military leaders claimed that in the August 26, 21 attack in Afghanistan, they killed 13 American service members at the Hamid Karzai International Airport, Abbey Gate, was, quote, not preventable. However, sources who are on the ground, as well as recently released Army investigative report, says that President Joe Dementia, ordered to evacuate as many people as possible, contributed to the attack. Quote, based on our investigation at the tactical level, this was not preventable. U.S. Army Central Command Lieutenant General Ron Clark, the lead investigator, told reporters at a briefing on his findings last month. Last month. My, how a situation overseas shadows everything else. Interesting. However, his report, which was released via Freedom Information Act because it had to, because they weren't going to give it up freely, to the Washington Post in February, the Post. Yeah. The Bezos-owned trash rag, Washington Post said that one of his key findings, the attack was not preventable at the tactical level without degrading the mission to maximize the number of evacuees. Yes, fuck the servicemen as long as we try to get out as many as possible, and yet you still left Americans behind. A U.S. government source who was on the ground during the evacuation to uh, and close to their officials conducting it told Breitbart News in an interview that Biden had directed them to, quote, get asses in seats in order to get as many people on planes out of Kabul as possible. That major evacuation order led to the ballooning of the non-combatant evacuation operation scale, which the military would fulfill at great risk. Quote, it was basically the second day. You know, the president of the United States called. I didn't talk to him, not saying I talked to him, but I heard the conversation. He was like, I want effing asses in seats, the source told. 
And so what happens when you do that? The gates opened. And that's why I believe the last statistic I saw was like maybe 10% of the people out of 124,000 that we got out of there are actually warranted to be out of there. Only 10%. Although the U.S. government had plans for months for an orderly, non-combatant evacuation operation for the U.S. Uh, officials, allies, designated Afghans, designated Afghans. Well, what unfolded was an all-out fight by tens of thousands of desperate Afghans to get into a four-and-a-half-mile perimeter airport stemmed only by a few thousand U.S. troops at various gates that were in constant danger of being breached. You saw on video. You had Afghans who were hanging off the ends of planes as they were taken to fuck off to get the hell out of the damn country because literally they wanted to get the hell out of Dodge because all hell had broke loose. The investigation found a situation where commanders had to choose between protecting forces or getting more evacuees through per dementia's orders. Quote, the priority for the Marines at Abbey Gate was maximizing the flow of evacuees through the gate to the evacuation control center. Any time spent in placing obstacles was not time spent searching and screening civilian evacuees. Yes, because they're all regular normal people and, you know, terrorists couldn't have squeezed through. Quote, lead struck, uh, leaders struck the balance of protecting the force and maximizing the flow of evacuees as best possible under the circumstances. The Army report also said the gate commanders were allowed to shut the gates in response to the threats, but that they were under tremendous pressure from strategic level. Combatant Command, CCMD, Joint Staff, White House, to continue the process and evacuate civilians to the maximum extent, extent possible. So gates closures were done rarely, locally and temporarily. An interviewee told the investigators, quote, The president said to open the gates and get as many people on the planes as possible. Any American ID and their families was to be let in. We had to make sure every aircraft was full. Then we will also receive a statement saying women and children at risk should be brought to, uh, through as priority like American citizens. This increased the inflow of personnel massively. This set the stage for the 26th. Quote, the decision to get the effing asses in seats crushed us, U.S. government source told Breitbart News. August 18th, 2021, email released by Senator Josh Hawley in October 21, backed the sources claim that Biden had ordered U.S. officials to allow people through and fill out the planes. August 18th of 2021, but yet it was only released in October of 2021, of course, when the damage had been done. The email subject line was presidential directive. Biden's directive came at a shocking footage of Afghans trying to flee Afghanistan, even charging to departing planes and some aircraft leaving Afghanistan almost empty. Yes, they were trying to get the hell out of there just as fast as the Afghans were, and a lot of the planes were empty. The U.S. government source told Breitbart News there was definitely more pressure to evacuate more people after Biden's order. Shit like this fucking angers me. Shit like this. The incompetence. The fucking incompetence. Excuse my language. Normally I try to hold back. Angers me greatly. This didn't have to happen. It didn't. It did not have to happen. But when you do a half-assed, not even a half-assed, a quarter-assed, I'm sorry, Let's go with a three-quarter ass job and not knowing what the fuck you're doing and evacuating evacuations, excuse me, and you basically just blare the horn and everybody's running for the gates. It's just like yelling a fire in a crowded theater. You don't fucking do it. But Dementia Boy did it to the point that 13 Marines lost their lives. For no fucking reason. They tried their best while they were out there. And they lost their lives. Because of the incompetence. Of our dementia riddled old fucking man. Who should not be president of the United States. But yet. Was installed as one. And with that being said. I'm Jasper Gonzo. This is What's Next. Want to see more just like this? Please leave a comment below. Like it. 
share it, subscribe to it. And we'll catch you guys again next time. Peace.